come and sing for us, and then when they're done, Pastor Alan Gay will come with our message for this morning. By the way, I love to Miss Jane. Thank you.
Bibles this morning. Look with us and look at 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Corinthians chapter 6, and you found the place to stand where we read God's words together. <coughs> Continue this morning, um, we've done the last few times in preaching, uh, to carry a burden for the lost. Thank God for that burden. Yes. And I'm praying that that burden is um, evidence that he has a purpose mm -hmm. to indeed fulfill that in our midst and see mm -hmm. a precious soul come to save faith in Jesus Christ. So we're preaching in that hope. Thank God for that hope. Yes, brother. And we come back to that uh, this morning. And we look, 1 Corinthians 6, three verses here to start this morning. Beginning with verse 9 Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revivers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. Amen. And such were some of you, but ye are washed, but ye are sanctified, but ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. Father, we ask you this morning to take your word and make it effectual in the hearts of those who hear it today. We acknowledge the wind of God blows where he wills. And we would ask you to be pleased to blow in our midst this yes. morning. Yes, and God. Do the work that only you can do in the hearts of them that know you not. Draw sinners to yourself. God, uh, justify one in our midst this morning. Sanctify one. And we claim that to come no other way but in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. Do it for Christ's sake, for Christ's honor. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. understood statement in verse 9 where Paul said the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. And we live in a day in a time and I'm sure this has been throughout history but seems to be uh, more prevalent and prominent in our day that uh, people have the misunderstanding and the deception that it is possible to be unrighteous and yet still inherit the kingdom of God. And that is the result of uh, the true gospel of Jesus Christ not being preached as it should be preached. That is the result of false teachers. That is the result of them who claim to come in the name of God uh, to represent God and to bring his word. And yet they are blind, leaders of blind. Amen. And it is clear and it needs to be understood. And you're hearing this morning, if you're without Christ, you're in that category. 
you're unrighteous. And being in that category, you are disqualified from inheriting what? The kingdom of God. Now, this kind of preaching, um, I understand because I heard it as a lost person like you may be this morning. This kind of preaching uh, doesn't make you excited. It doesn't uh, make the hairs on the back of your neck stand up and give you a little tingle and a little uh, sense of self-satisfaction. What it does is it robs you of any and all uh, pillars that you may be propped up on this morning trusting in outside of Jesus Christ. I know how it makes you feel because it made me feel the same way, uncomfortable. You don't like it. I didn't like it. The first time that I visited then Mount Disco Baptist Church, I had become a student in the school and I think it was a basketball game weekend. I ended up staying with one of the families uh, at the school who were also members of the church at that time and stayed over with them because we returned late. So uh, they were going to church. I had to go to church. Amen. <laughs> but I remember after that uh, service uh, being asked by them, well, what did you think? And I can remember clearly what I told them. I didn't like it. <laughs> and the reason I didn't like it is because uh, it seemed to me that what he said was just preaching down on people. Down and down. <coughs> well, that was B.C. <laughs> before Christ. Amen. <laughs> And now, after the new birth, I see it a whole lot differently right. than I did at that moment. Right. You have to go through those days and those times and those kind of hearings to get to the place where you're indeed ready and willing to behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. Amen. You have to come to a realization as we preached a few weeks ago that Christ didn't come to call the righteous but sinners to repentance. You have to get to the place where you see yourself sick and in need of the physician before you'll ever desire him or want him. Right. Am I right? That is right? And that may be negative and uncomfortable at the time. But thank God when God makes it effectual in the heart, you'll thank God that he brought you through that to bring you to the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And you cannot separate the two. You have to become guilty. Yeah. You have to become guilty before you ever desire emancipation and freedom and liberty that is given in Christ. Amen. And so Paul is clear here in the statement that before us this morning, the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Very simple outline in these three verses, the unrighteous are denied. They shall not inherit the kingdom of God. They are described here in the text. He gives the works, the outward works of which are fruits of that inner depravity that uh, envelops every and all that are born of Adam. Uh, those works including idolatry, adultery, effeminate, abusers of themselves with mankind. Uh, by the way, I've heard some say that uh, to preach against um, that long acronym that Describes these people these days, LGBT, whatever you want to call yourself. 
Uh, some would say, well, that's just Old Testament. Well, you're wrong. You haven't read the New Testament. Right. Because right there before us, God says, a part of being unrighteous, one of the works of that is being effeminate, soft, right? right? An abuser of themselves with mankind. That is sovereign. Yes. Mm -hmm. I understand we have children here this morning, but... Uh, it's being paraded before them in all kinds of ways in this hour. And they need to understand as well, it is wrong. Amen. It is sin. Right. And it's not just an Old Testament law buried back there somewhere in this book. It is right here before us in the New Testament. And it is still called sin. Amen. Abusers of themselves with mankind. Thieves. Covetous. Drunkards. Revilers, extortioners, all of these describe, and there are more, but uh, you and I, we're in there somewhere. Right, yes. Exactly right. He called our number in there somewhere, right? And if you're here without Christ this morning, your number's in there somewhere as well. And he goes on to reemphasize what is it about this crowd. Uh, this people who live such a lifestyle, they shall not inherit the kingdom of God. But then aren't we glad that uh, there is a third D in these verses, the unrighteous deliverer. Yes. Because such were some of you, verse 11, but ye are what? But ye are sanctified. Yes, but ye are justified. How? In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And by the Spirit of our God. Job, in the book of Job, the, uh, probably the most um, prominent question in the history of man. And one that if you're without Christ this morning, you need to consider and really mull over in your heart. Job 9 and verse 2 says, But how should man be just with God? How should man be just with God? The word just there means to be righteous. To be clear. To be cleansed. Uh, to be declared not guilty. Right. Amen. And so that is a, a, a very sobering question that you and I need to be able to answer correctly this morning. How should man be just with God? How is it that I, given the sinful condition I'm in, according to Ephesians 2 and 1, dead in trespasses and sin, and uh, under sin, Romans 3, 9 says, out of the way, Romans 3, 12 says, uh, all being guilty, Romans 3, 19, all having missed the mark and come short of the glory of God. You notice there's a, a, a key word in all these verses, all. That's all of us. Yes. This is yes, what sir. we were outside of Christ. Yes. And it's what you are outside of Christ. If you don't know him this morning, sin and come short of the glory of God. And death is upon all because all have sin. How is it that we, being described by the Word of God in such a way, how should we then be made just with God? How is it those under the condemnation of God can no longer be under that condemnation? And again, I say, you're not going to be condemned. The Bible says you're already condemned right. because you've not believed right. on the name of the only begotten Son of God, John 3, 18. 
Everybody loves to run to John 3, 16. Nothing wrong with that. Thank God for the verse. Yes. God did love the world so much that he gave. But you also have to read on down to verse 18 and understand if you don't believe in him, you're under the condemnation of right. God. Yes, right. So how are we delivered from this condemned state to where we can be just with God? How do we obtain a righteousness which positions us in a place of acceptability with God? <coughs> Very important. Now, I, I'm prepared this morning. This may end up seeming dry, you know. I may have to dust things off up here a little bit, but that's all right because uh, I'm convinced it's still it's going to be the line upon line and the right. precept right. upon precept right. of the preaching of what we are outside of Christ and what we can be in Christ. Yes. That it, we've got to keep hammering the nail. Yes, sir. So I'm going to do it this morning. Whether you look like you're enjoying it or not. <laughs> we love the gospel. How do we get to this place of acceptability with God? Well, Ephesians said we are dead in trespasses and sins. But I'll remind you it also says, for by grace are you saved. Through faith. And that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Not of works, lest any man should boast, right? Mm -hmm. And so, uh, if I seem this morning that I'm stripping all hope from you, I'm doing that with the intent to give it back to you in a way that uh, is far better than how you're trying to obtain it. Yeah. Amen? Amen. Sure. Sure. I'll take any and all hope from you this morning that's outside of the grace of God in Jesus Christ. Amen. But I can give you, and I can offer you, not me, but God can give you a hope that will uh, even endure the week like we've had. Yes, sir. Yeah, that's right. I don't need to get off into that. No need this morning. What you and I need to be doing is continuing what we have been doing as a people, and that's preaching and living right. and honoring our Lord and our Savior through our lives, through His Word, through the ministries that He's given us. We just need to continue. I'm glad I'm a part of something this morning that is greater than the United States yeah. of America. Yeah. I'm a part of the blood-bought church yes. of the living God. Yes. And our country may go by the way but the gates of hell won't even prevail against the church. Yes. He's building it. He's going to finish Amen. it. He's going to perfect Lord it. God. And all them that he has given unto Christ are going to come to him. Yes. And that's who I'm fishing for Amen. this morning. Amen. I'm looking for one that he may have given to Christ, whom he might be pleased today to bring to himself by saving grace. Amen. Yes. But how are we going to get you to a place of acceptability with God? It'll be by grace. How are you going to get righteousness that God will accept? You can't go to heaven without it. That's right. Heaven's not a place where the wicked get to go and kick off their shoes and party through eternity. By the way, hell is an evil. Right. Amen. Hell is a place of eternal condemnation and suffering. Forever. Praise you, brother. Amen. Let me say this morning, uh, to begin with, four things. It's 12 o'clock already, so I'm behind the eight ball. But, um, Maybe we'll have to finish tonight, but let me start by saying, first of all, uh, righteousness is key to this thing. You cannot inherit the kingdom of God if you're unrighteous. That means you have to be made righteous. Right. 
to inherit God's kingdom. So there is then, first of all, the imperative of righteousness by the Father. You with me? Yes, sir. It's an imperative. It's not optional. Uh, God doesn't let some in that are and others in that are not. No. Uh, there will not enter into that city, John said, anything that defiles. Right. Anything that works abomination. Sin is gone. The curse is broken, right? Yes. All those who enter therein will be made like unto the Lord Jesus Christ. Right. How? They're going to see him as he is. <laughs> what a blessed day that's going to be. Thank God when the ball and chain called this flesh yes. is unshackled from Amen. my ankles and I bear it around no longer. Huh? And if you're born again this morning, you best uh, have that desire in you. We're, we're not going to be perfected in this life. Oh, but there's a day of perfection coming when we're made like him and we won't sin against him no more. But this name of righteousness uh, cannot be ignored as it pertains to the kingdom of God. You've got to be as righteous as Jesus is righteous to get into heaven. That's why it's called the straight gate and the narrow gate. Yep. All that uh, self-merit and all that self-righteousness that you're lugging around and got pinned to your breast, thinking that um, it's going to get you somewhere, that's all broad road stuff. Yep. That's right. It's going to go by the way. Yep. That leads to destruction. The gate that leads to life is straight and the way is narrow. It knocks all that stuff off. It takes what's twisted and bent and it makes it straight so that it can uh, get through the trail that leads to eternal life. Righteousness is not optional. It's required. I'm going to take time to read it. I may not get the, through the first point this morning, but that'll be all right. Turn back to the Gospel of Matthew for just a moment. Matthew 25. I started not to read it to make more time. That's because you can't make more time. Time is time. I started not to read it to use time on something else. But I want you to get the understanding this morning. Let Scripture speak for itself today. It doesn't need me. The Bible doesn't need me to uh, affirm its authority. No, it's right. God's Word. Hey. It's the Word of God. It's true. It doesn't need me to um, help convince people of its truth. I will tell you, and I'll stand upon the fact that it is true, but it doesn't need me to prove it to you. But I want you to hear what uh, God's Word says in this matter of in righteousness being an imperative uh, with God. Notice beginning verse 31, when the Son of Man shall come in His glory, and all the holy angels with Him, then shall He sit upon the throne of His glory. And before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another. As a shepherd divided his sheep from the goats, and he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. Now skip down to verse 41. Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, the goats, what? Depart from me, ye cursed, in the everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. Now look down to verse 46. And these shall go away into everlasting punishment. Who's he referring to? The goats, right? Not the sheep, the goats. These shall go away into everlasting punishment. Notice the last phrase. But the righteous 
into life eternal. Now, you want to talk about righteousness mattering? It's the difference between eternal life and eternal destruction. Right. Amen. It's imperative. You can't get around it. The unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God. Matthew 5.20 For I say unto you that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, ye shall in no wise, no case, enter into the kingdom of heaven. Now, how much do I have to labor? You get the point? If you're unrighteous, you're not going to heaven. No matter how far you have deceived yourself into thinking, you're okay. If you're outside of Christ, you're disqualified from entering the kingdom of God. In fact, we can't enter the kingdom of God without him. He's the door to the sheep. He is the straight gate, by the way. Yes, <laughs> Amen. Uh, no man comes unto the Father but by him. And so, uh, get it out of your thinking that there's a big scale in heaven. And we'll all get up there one day and God's going to put pleasing works on one side of the scale and those not so pleasing on the other side of the scale and hopefully it will balance in my favor favor, and he'll say uh, come ye in, bless the Lord and inherit the kingdom. No, that's not how it goes. Jesus Christ is on the scale. He is the scale. He is the standard of righteousness. And if you don't meet out with him, it will be depart from me. I never knew. Huh? No matter how many times you say, Lord, Lord. And no matter how long your resume is of all the works that you did in his name. Huh? Read Matthew 7. And so there's no scale. The good won't outweigh the bad. You're either in Christ or you're not in Christ. If you're in him, you're no longer unrighteous. And therefore, you can inherit the kingdom of God. If you're not in him, you're yet in your sins, and the wrath of God abideth on you. Huh? Follow peace with all men and holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. Huh? All right? Ten minutes on point one. <laughs> We're going to do five, one point two. Number one, then the imperative of righteousness with the Father. Secondly, I want to point out to you right quickly as we try to finish here, the impotence of righteousness through man. Now here's the double-edged sword. God requires righteousness, and man cannot produce one that pleases him. That spells T-R-O-U-B-L-E. Trouble. Amen. God's requiring something you can't produce. Brother Gillum says, well, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I think he got that from Scooby Doo. <laughs> the impotence of righteousness through man. The scripture is quite clear. Man, according to scripture, Romans 3 and verse 10, he's absent of any kind of righteousness that God will accept. Because the Bible says there's none righteous, no, not one. The Bible also talks about the fact that any righteousness which man will try to produce himself, God will not accept. Right? Yep, right. Isaiah 64, 6, but we are all as an unclean thing. 
And all our righteousnesses are as filthy rags. Paul was clear in dealing with Israel that their righteousness was not acceptable with God unless it was what? By faith in Christ. Paul said in Galatians to the church of Galatia, I do not frustrate the grace of God, for if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. And I bring up the law again because that's where man always runs. In fact, without the law, I'm not sure what men would do to try to justify themselves. But they know enough of the law, and it is written in their conscience, amen, unless it be seared now and beyond feeling and without any kind of guilt, which is where we're fast-headed in America. But that law is written in their conscience. And so men will turn to the keeping of it in the energy of their own flesh and by the merits of their own work and then think, well, God then is my debtor. He, he owes me one. Yep. Well, I'm going to say it before and I'm going to say it again. God is no man's debtor. Paul talks about that in Romans. If it comes by works, then the reward is not reckoned of grace, but of what? Dead. God owes us. God doesn't know us. That's right. Because it doesn't come by works. It comes by grace. And what you need to understand this morning is that you're without any power. You're without any ability to please God based upon your own works and your own deeds. It cannot be done. I told you this makes you squirm a little bit, makes you uncomfortable. Uh, you may go out of here and say, I didn't like it. You just preached down on me. That's what I did. Until, bless God, he brought me to the realization he was telling me the truth. And the problem was not with the truth. The problem was I wasn't willing to accept the truth that was being told about me. Exactly because right. I love darkness rather than I yeah. love light. And I didn't want my deeds brought to the light to be exposed. Yeah. Right. Oh, but thank God he brought me to the light. Yes. And exposed them. Yes, praise God. And not just exposed them, but by grace yes. and by his a constraining love brought me to a place where I finally, uh, by the work of the Spirit of God, was willing to agree hey. with what God has said about me. You realize that's a part of repentance. Mm -hmm. Repentance is still necessary for salvation. Yes, repentance and faith. Repentance and faith. It's all about faith out here today with no repentance. No, it's still repentance yes, and yes. faith in Jesus. And a part of repentance is God bringing us by his goodness. The goodness of God leadeth men to repentance. And you know what you do in repentance? You agree with him. God, you said this about me. I agree. I concur. I no longer choose to try to hide it justify it, excuse it. I'm without excuse. The law left me that way. I can't say anything anymore because the law stopped my mouth. Yeah. I have to agree with you today. The law has declared me guilty. 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 Right? Yes, sir. But you have to understand I'm begging you to understand this morning. Stop trying to justify things in your life. Stop trying to excuse them. Stop trying to sweep it under the rug. Stop trying to justify yourself however you're doing. And realize today, the only hope I have is in Jesus Christ. Because whatever you're trying and whatever you're using to produce what you think will make you acceptable with God is impotent. Right. 
He has no power to do anything. Right. No power. That's why Paul said, be found in him. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory. Yes, sir. What a blessing scripture. And be found in him. What? Not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. That's hope, friend. Well, that was about eight minutes. <laughs> More in there, maybe we'll finish, Lord willing, tonight if we don't change our direction. But understand again this morning, there's an imperative of righteousness with God. It cannot be sidestepped. It cannot be ignored. It has to be dealt with. There's a gulf there. God's on one side, the unrighteous are on the other. There's a gulf there. And that gulf has to be spanned or there's no hope. And to my second point, you trying to span that gulf yourself is a waste of time. You can't do it. You can't do it. There's a lot on the broad road out there trying to span that goal, but they can't do it. But the blessed truth is this morning, that narrow way, it's already been spanned. In Christ Jesus. Yes. And that's where we want to get you this morning. Is all that broad road. And on the narrow way, which leadeth to life eternal. Yeah. All sinner for end. I know it's a hard pill to swallow. When you're on the backside of saving grace. But if you ever come to a saving knowledge of Him, you will thank God for the day somebody told you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <clears throat> and I'd rather you hate me for telling you the truth and love me because I've told you a lot. Yes, sir. And yes, sir. I'm way yes, sir. added to your deception. Yes, I'm glad I can say today the gate is still open. Praise God. Yes, yes, sir. The gate's open. Yes. Yeah. He said, enter in at the straight gate. That's right. And I'm glad I can say that the gate's open. What you need to do is come and enter therein. Mm -hmm. How do I do that? That gate is Christ. That gate is Christ. It's by faith and repentance mm -hmm. toward God. Amen. Let's all stand.